Okay, uh, welcome everyone to yet another fascinating talk um, of this RTP All Over event. Um, before NOPUR starts, um, I would like to thank our sponsors uh, of this year's annual event um, to make it possible that um, people and talks from all corners of the world are being presented in this online event. So I would gratefully thank our titanium sponsor, Google, our diamond sponsor, Sandal, the two platinum sponsors, Adobe and FounderType, as well as a silver sponsor, Microsoft, uh, the amber sponsor, Morisawa, bronze sponsors, FontLab and Monotype. And as educational uh, partner, we have uh, the Polish Japanese Academy of um, Technology and uh, TDC as our organizational partner. So thank you once again for all your support and making it possible that this uh, event is happening uh, in this time of the year. Much gratitude. Thank you one more time and welcome, and welcome, welcome to, to 2021 all over. So we are connecting amazing people who loves letters and also working in the field of letters throughout the world. So we have our presenter, Nupur Dati, and she is a type designer and calligrapher from Mumbai, India, a, a graduate of C Sri JZ Institute of Applied Arts. She is one of the co-founder of ICTI, a collaborative type founder that designs type in 11 different scripts used in India. So Daiji primarily works with Devnagari, Bengali, Gujarati, and also uh, Gurmukhi scripts. And her work includes custom Bengali and Devnagari typeface for television channels, different television channels. And her work has also won several awards, including wooden pencil at DNA ED and also Black Elephant at Curious Design Yatra. And we are so happy to have her in our A Type I 2021 happening all over. So over to you, Nupur. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nupur Date from A Type. My talk is a 20 minute glimpse of a 20 month project. Since I cannot cover everything, I will focus on our approach to designing multi-script families, its relevance in the global context, and its impact on the visual design of the Anik type family. Anik, meaning many or multiple, is a family of multiple weights, widths, and scripts. It reflects the multiple voices, ideas, and perspectives of 12 designers who have worked on it. In this team, Mahesh, Saram, Sulekha, Adarsh, Yesha, Maithili, Kailash, Omkar, Brunmai, and Vaishnavi have largely focused on one script each. I will be referring to them and using their quotes in this presentation. I juggle multiple roles. As the sutradhar, or one who binds everything together, I facilitate discussions, mediate debates, plan timelines, I also draw glyphs, run consistency checks, and give lots of feedback. Girish works on the engineering bit. But more importantly, he makes sure that we also think about our designs. He asks existential questions. What are we designing? Why are we designing it? What does it mean to be part of a family? Trying to answer these questions gives relevance to our work. As a type studio that works with most of the major scripts from India, we get many custom requirements that involve translating the visual language of typefaces, logo types, or taglines from Latin to Indian scripts. When we work on these projects, we ensure that our scripts reflect the calligraphic traditions or typographic norms of their respective script cultures. Like all conscious designers, we give priority to the visual grammar of our scripts instead of merely matching it to Latin. On one hand, projects like these allow type families or brands to reach wider audiences. But on the other hand, they limit the scope of designers like us to make choices and take decisions. The design or the designer of Latin defines the visual language, the purpose, and the scope of the project. Other scripts and their designers 
are expected to match or harmonize their designs with the existing Latin. Though this may not always be the case, but this seems to be a common narrative for large multi-script families or branding projects that originate in the global north. We break away from this Latin first approach when we design our own type families. Instead of giving priority to one script, we design simultaneously and collaboratively in all scripts. The team democratically decides the approach, the appearance, and the purpose of the typeface. All previous multi-script projects initiated by Ake Type have followed this approach. And Anek was no different. We begin projects like this with a broad, flexible outline. Our premise for Anik was to design a monolinear family with variable weight and width axis in multiple scripts. Based on this, designers explored the possibilities and limitations in their respective scripts. There was constant downpour of thoughts and visuals from everyone at this stage. Once a week, we would meet and sieve through the ideas. Apart from the obvious discussions about the visual appearance or the look and feel of the typeface, we also discussed potential problems, technical issues, and timelines. We studied the effects of weight and width on character structures and counter shapes, and how they eventually affect the relative proportions of characters and the rhythm of text. If you haven't encountered scripts from India before, this will give you a quick context of our visual challenges. To put it very simply, the nine scripts here have base characters in the center with vowel signs and conjuncts that come above, below, or next to them. Character complexities, textures, and rhythms for each of these scripts is different. Simpler shapes like these are peppered with complex ones. This makes adding or reducing weight a bit tricky, but managing weight is right up our alley. We have done it in several typefaces before, but widths was a relatively uncharted territory for us. Apart from Devnagri, it is hard to find type families with weight and width axis in other Indian scripts. These are a few notable attempts. The first two by Mahindra Patel and RK Zoshi are concept sketches, and only some of those styles were available as fonts. This is not to say that condensed or expanded letter forms don't exist in our scripts. Of course they do, as individual typefaces or as lettering, but not as type systems. Existing designs gave us cues on what to do, but more importantly, they also gave us a heads up on what not to do. Here are a few things that we realized while looking at existing condensed and expanded letter forms. Similar letters can appear ambiguous in condensed masters. Structures of certain letters create illusions of taller or wider letters. These illusions are exaggerated as widths change. Some letters can be condensed or expanded more than others. This makes the relative widths of letters seem disproportionate. In scripts like Devnagri and Gujarati, this can have further implications on features like Ikar Matra groups. Disproportionate relative widths also affect the texture, rhythm, and hence readability of some scripts. The verticality of the characters in condensed widths is enhanced by shorter above and below base forms. But in expanded widths, characters require taller above and below base forms to balance the hollow spaces within them. This can lead to multiple issues. If matra heights are kept consistent across widths, matras in condensed look vertically stretched and those in expanded look horizontally stretched. If only matra heights change with widths without changing the heights of the base characters, then the expanded versions may appear like a larger point size than the condensed. Like the above and below base forms, Internal proportions of letters also change with width. Scripts can look stretched or squeezed if these internal proportions are not balanced. Some commonly seen structures may not work across large weight and width ranges. 
for practical purposes, we had one self-imposed restriction. Instead of resorting to distinctly different approaches across widths, designers were requested to stick to approaches that would work across the design space. Though this is not something that everyone necessarily followed. After a few weeks of discussing intentions, inspirations, and problems, we gradually built a pool of visual features. Since we were working with many scripts, this pool was quite large and open to interpretation. Some features from this pool were commonly shared across scripts, while some others were script-specific. We collectively decided on the common ones and individually on the script-specific ones. Each one was free to add or borrow from this pool. The most important overarching feature that we agreed on were these circles. They defined the weight and width range, the contrast and transition of curves, and helped in setting vertical matrix and relative heights of different scripts. They were based on our explorations and findings from the previous stage. Like I said before, each feature in the pool was flexible for interpretation. Here is a compilation of the circular forms from different scripts towards the completion of the project. Apart from the evident differences in widths, heights, and weight that you see here, there are differences in contrasts as well. Many scripts have heavier sides, but Telugu and Kannada appear to have heavier bottoms. Odia has a mix of both. The lower parts of the characters have heavier sides, but the contrast changes in the upper portions. Joineries and terminals form the large part of the visual pool. They led to many discussions, deliberations, and trials. The joinery that you see here initially seemed either too fragile or too disruptive in many scripts. Nonetheless, it was a feature everyone liked and wanted to keep. So we made variations for where and how to scale, how much to scale. We checked if it could be implemented across masters and its impact on interpolation. We tested it in words and conjuncts. Eventually, it made its way into most of the scripts. Another distinctive trait that designers wanted to incorporate was this feeling of sharpness. This feeling eventually manifested itself through a variety of visual features. You can see it strongly in features like the sharp terminals, angled joineries, and pointed structures, and more subtly in sloped headlines and curved knots. In contrast to, to, the, sorry, to the sharpness, most designers preferred circular or semicircular forms for the dots, bindus, nuktas, pullis, kombus, and titles. Few of the scripts also share a feature in which some forms, some forms fuse as they become heavier. A broad premise like the one we had can lead to many possibilities. When we began, the final visual outcome of the type family was unknown to us. But by the end of two months, we had a clearer understanding of where we were headed. Until we finalized the root letters of 10 scripts in four masters that you see here, we made multiple iterations of the design. We constantly revised, reconfigured, and reinterpreted our ideas. We didn't necessarily agree on everything, but we discussed, argued, and took decisions. We learned a lot in this dynamic, ever-evolving phase. We got sensitized towards different scripts and towards thought processes of different designers. The many ideas that we didn't include in Anik got stored away for future projects. After this stage, designers branched out and worked on their individual scripts for a while. As before, we continued our weekly meetings, but instead of the visual features, we discussed spacing and consistency. As glyph sets evolved, textures and rhythms of individual scripts took prominence. Designers added their own flavors and preferences to their respective scripts. This led to diverse script-specific features. I will share some of these features and the different textures here. Kailash, Murunmai, and Saram have interpreted similar features in Devnagari, Gujarati, and Gurmukhi very differently. 
If you look at the matras on top, the ones in Gujarati reflect hand-painted street lettering, but the ones in Gurmukhi are reminiscent of the tapering found in text faces. These differences add to the unique textures of these scripts. I would like to point out something here. Many thin or extra light typefaces in Devanagari either have a very tight, either have very tiny or very big knots. Tiny, tiny knots make characters seem incomplete, and heavy knots stand out painfully in text. Kailash has designed the knots such that they neither disappear nor stand out in the thin weights. The same is true for knots in Gujarati as well. The feeling of sharpness was more evidently used in Gurumukhi as compared to other scripts. In Malayalam, Maithili has designed character, character shapes that change according to width. Characters that are compact in condensed widths shift to more open forms as they go wider. These compact forms as add denseness to the texture in condensed, while open apertures add airiness to the textures in expanded. In Tamil, Adarsh has exploited the use of character alternates. In an approach heavily inspired from street lettering, several of his characters take on compact shapes as they go narrower, while some others also transform with changing weight. I'm showing only a few of them here. These alternating forms added diversity to the design space of Anik Tamil. But most of these forms were combinations of consonant and vowel signs that required open type code to render them. So getting these alternating forms to work in a variable space was slightly tricky. While Tamil had stark differences, it is the subtle features that added charm to Bangla. Sulekha has meticulously designed curves that morph into flat lines as they become narrower. Also notice how terminals curve slightly inwards in expanded forms. And that's how Bengali looked across the four corners of the design space. The most challenging script in this project was Odia. Balancing stroke thicknesses, counter spaces, and rhythm in heavier weights and extreme widths was a tough balancing act. Given the complexity of Odia, Mahesh and Yesha had the option to reduce both weight and width range if they wanted to. But they didn't do that. They kept trying till they were finally able to pull it off. A script that benefited from wider widths was Telugu but it was a challenge in condensed. The texture of Telugu has many pockets of empty spaces, like the character on the right. If they are not spaced well, heavier weights in condensed can feel scattered. Omkar and Vaishnavi have retained individual quirks in their Telugu and Kannada characters. The first two characters are identical in both scripts, but they are drawn distinctly different in Anik. These are some textures from Kannada. Scripts in Anik work well individually, but they also work equally well in a multi-script setting. Here you have Bangla, Odia, Gujarati, and Telugu across different weights in expanded. The textures that you've seen before this were from the corners of the design space. Here are a few of the in-between ones. This is Tamil and Malayalam in semi-condensed medium. This is how Gujarati and Latin look in extra light. And Gurumukhi and Kannada in semi-expanded bold. And this is the regular weight from Devanagari and Odia. The scripts here have distinctly different personalities. 
the languages for which they are used also have their own traits. But in spite of the differences, scripts in Anek can come together as a family. The balanced letter structures and even textures of Anek make it versatile. Prominent visual features like joineries and terminals that were highlights of heavier weights mellow down as they become lighter. This allows Anek to be used across weights, widths, and sizes. There is a long, hard, laborious part that I have skipped in this presentation. The part where we fine-tuned character shapes and counter spaces, completed glyph sets and spacing, worked on curling, open type features, testing, and consistency checks. As we worked on our individual scripts, we also checked consistency in stroke weight and spaces for other scripts. We got our work reviewed by external experts. Collaboration has been at the heart of this project. Those of us who finished earlier assisted others till the end. For about seven to 10 months, we worked only on four masters. As we moved towards the center of our universe, we suddenly realized the scope of this project. We were always aware of the design space that we were working with. But most of us had never seen our scripts or our typefaces in so many styles before. And when we did, we couldn't help but stop and stare. Anek opens a new door of possibilities for typography in Indian scripts. It is a well-informed, refreshing, and contemporary take on our scripts. The strength of Anek is the multi-script and variable aspect of it. But I feel it is more important that, but I feel what is more important is its contribution to the existing typographic palette for each of these scripts and the scope it gives its users. From where we started, we have, a, we have come a long way in this project. Starting with root letters, I'm showing letters from just one script here for reference. We moved to completing the Unicode characters, followed by completing character sets in four masters. Eventually, we worked on nine masters. And this is an overview of Anik. All glyphs from 10 scripts in nine masters. As type designers living in a multi-script country, Designing families with multiple scripts is inevitable for us. But with increasing globalization, the need for global multi-script families seems to be growing as well. But can global multi-script families also be designed inclusively? Instead of being inclusive by extending Latin typefaces to include more scripts, can they be conceptualized in a more inclusive manner? Our process of designing simultaneously and collaboratively for multiple scripts is not necessarily convenient or easy, but we prefer to have an egalitarian approach than a hierarchical one. This is an open source project, and I would like to thank everyone who's helped us along the way. And thank you all for listening. Wow, thank you so much, Nopur, for this fascinating talk and interesting project, the ANEC project. It's wow, uh, impressive, impressive work. Um, is there any questions from the audience? Let's see. Uh, yes. Um, I've got one question from Rafael who wants to know. How do you guys manage the numerous crazy stress access from the numerous different scripts? Telugu and Latin have very different stress access where Latin vertical elements are usually thick and Telugu horizontal elements are usually thick. Um, yeah, that's, that's the first part of this question. So how did you all manage this yeah, numerous amount of, of stress access? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so we have, so we have uh, I'm hearing an echo. I'm... Hello. Ah, okay. Okay. 
Uh, so because we have uh, a designer that works with, diff like we have 10 designers. If we have 10 scripts, we'll have 10 designers who work on it. And it's their job to take care of the script that they are dealing with, irrespective of what is happening to the contrast in any other script. So if the contrast is, uh, if Telugu and Kannada need to have a, co a bottom uh, contrast at, or they need to be heavy at the base, that is what the, the designer of Telugu and Kannada, they, that's what they are going to do. So they, they, it's not going to be not bottom heavy, heavy because some other script is not bottom heavy. So basically, we just treat each of the scripts differently and what suits them. I hope that answers your question. I think so. There's one great uh, comment from Ran who says very good illustrations that you have provided. So that's very positive. Good, good uh, uh, slides. Um, Myra asks uh, how such a massive project, so much team effort put into it, and it's open source. Thank you so much for the energetic presentation. So it's all praise from Myra as well. Uh, Raphael, who asked the question, mentions indeed that every question that you asked it, answered it correctly. Um, and it's nice to see that South and Southeast Asia have script diversity in a larger scale than Europe, Latin, Greek, and Cyrillic. Uh, he also mentions that Tamil and Odia are totally crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, feel free to ask more questions in the chat room. Um, in the meantime, Nopur, I would like to ask something. Um, uh, at the start of the project, for instance, you say we have six different writing systems of India that we are uh, want to cover. Um, is it six people working individually um, and then coming together to share their designs or their sketches? Or do you work on a specific word or a term? Um, and then can you maybe elaborate a little bit more on the process at the start of it? Uh, yes, sorry. You uh, Did I say six different scripts or did I no, say No, no, no. I, I, yeah. I, I was just saying a number. So, ah, okay. uh, or 10. Yeah, it was just out of my, like, like let's say ah. six or 10. Or, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so, like I said, we start with the premise. Uh, as to what we are going to draw, which is a very broad, faint outline of what the project is going to be. So when we begin, we don't really know how wide the width range is going to be, how uh, heavy the heaviest weight or the, how light the lightest weight is going to be. We don't know these things when we begin. Okay, so, uh, so each of the 12 people, they draw characters in different scripts to try and test what is possible in those scripts. So... Uh, they would try, uh, like, and they, and we would, we would, like, we have these weekly, very long weekly Zoom calls on which everyone put forth their, just presents their ideas on what they are thinking about, what is possible in their scripts, what is not possible in their scripts. There, there are a whole range of uh, problems that different people face. Uh, what kind of weight range is possible for some scripts? And maybe... Uh, so, for example, like some scripts, of course, Latin, for example, or even Malayalam, it's possible to draw heavier letters as well, or even narrower or wider letters. But we try and see what is the weight range that is comfortable for everyone to draw. Uh, what is the width range that is comfortable for everyone to draw? And then uh, as, we, as we start to narrow down these things, uh, we... Uh, and people are posting visuals as well. So, uh, so we are using this online platform called Basecamp. So there's almost like a daily update of visuals at the beginning of the project where people are posting the things that they are drawing, the things that they are trying. And in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's all very different from each other, right? There's a whole range of things that people are posting. And then slowly, people start to... Uh, point out or like which features they seem to be liking more over others. And 
and then we like like i said when we start narrowing down on the pool of visual features that's almost like after 3 weeks of trying a whole range of things and and 3 weeks of uh, discussing a whole range of things and that is when uh, we eventually narrow down on so so when i showed the circles if you remember from the slide uh mm -hmm. we we we've tried different contrasts we've tried like the currently the circles in condensed are have flat sides and they become rounder as they go wider so there were options for whether how flat they would go on the side or not or how mechanical or squarish those circles would be and how those impact the different scripts so as we start uh, like uh, discussing ideas on visuals all the designers also simultaneously try and adapt those ideas into a few of those let few of their letters and that's also when they discuss or flag uh, what is possible or what is not possible or what is working and the the overall feel of what they like as well so great yes thank you thanks very much good um in in before and the next question comes, I just want to know, like in Latin, we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Do you have similar kind of phrases for each of the languages or the scripts that you're using? Or? We, we, we have for a few of them, but yeah, uh, okay. that, uh, that doesn't uh, necessarily work uh, because no. we have so many, you, you know, we have so many different characters that, uh, uh you wouldn't like even the problem with big brown fox as well is like you you don't necessarily see those characters in text all of them together at a time right so the way it yeah. impacts the texture doesn't necessarily help uh what we do instead is for each part of the project so if we have root letters we have a set of words having only yeah. those root letters and we we use those set of words to test the texture and then the Good. textures eventually evolve as more characters come in. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for answering. I, I just have one clarification about the previous question. The, the initial phase may seem extremely chaotic to somebody from the outside because a lot of things are happening. There, there are, there is, there's lots of visual explorations that are happening, but we eventually sieve through all of it and arrive on one route mm -hmm. that we are all going to follow. Nice. I was a little unsure that I'm, go I'm, I'm go talking about a lot of scripts that a lot of people or most people in the audience would not know about. So, so I hope they got the gist of it or at least had a look at the textures that were there and that's the bright side of the presentation itself because you're showcasing a lot of uh, scripts that are not visible to people yet <laughs> that's something we need to do <laughs> <laughs>